Ghost Cult Magazine. Welcome to the guys from Human Impact. How are you guys doing today? Good, man. How are you? Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much for hanging out with us and you know coming to chat about all things Human Impact. You guys are kicking off a tour this weekend as we record this, the new EP out this year, and just the whole very interesting arc of the band. First and foremost, I never like to lose the uh, human part of these things. Like, you know, I love music and I love art. I love shows, and I've been very. I feel very fortunate that we've gotten to get some shows back and push people and scream and shout our feelings and uh but i'm not you know obviously look it's been a very tough time the last couple of years people have lost people the income lost the inability to go and make money you guys as a band of veterans in the music industry know have seen everything and you know historically you make money by playing shows and handing merch to people so i i do hope you guys are well i hope your families are well all your collaborators and various things are okay yeah we're good absolutely generally good likewise yeah Okay. Hope everybody's good on your end. Yeah, you know, we're hanging in there. We had some losses here on the staff, but otherwise, personally, oh, I'm wow. okay. I'm good. And you know, the year has been brutal, but like we're just pushing forward. That's all we can do is process and move on. And yeah. uh, we need some punchy, punchy, angry music to listen to. So I'm thrilled <laughs> to talk about Human Impact. Um, for those that don't know, I, I don't want to throw around bandy about the word supergroup. But like to a certain audience, you guys are kind of like a superhero type of group for like, if you had told me like 25 years ago, members of these bands are going to have a band one day and it's going to rock. I would have been like, nah, really? <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, like, me and Jim, me and Jim have known each other since way back then, like before he, he was in Cops and Cop. Even. Yeah, totally. And so totally. And, uh, and it's funny, I, I keep running into that word being used super group you know and, and and it's like i definitely kind of like have an aversion to it. it it feels like for one thing it feels kind of like ego driven or something like um uh and and we're miles away from that right um you know but it, I, I understand like the pedigree for lack of a better word or the history of our of our bands and and, and and that's like you know that's that's a significant thing um but we're we're not calculated about bringing this band together. It's just kind of like, you know, it's just something we wanted to do from the heart, you know? So. Yes. It definitely seemed like a, a collaboration of like-minded individuals and not about headlines or, and it, you know, no, of course not, but like, and especially if you make this music, it's like music, uncomfortable music to get uncomfortable to for people with few friends. So like, <laughs> this is, this is our only uniting factor is that we yeah. like this music. I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're obviously with the Cop Shoe Cop and Swans and Unsane. These are legendary bands all to themselves. By themselves, anything you guys would be doing, I would be down for. We would be down to cover. Many people would be like, a word? Cool. But like, the, yeah, you know, obviously it's like attention grabbing. But it's like, oh, wow, look at these uh, people collaborating on this thing. And so like, obviously you guys go way back. You play shows together, you know, just maybe even same labels once sometimes. So like, how did this group, if I want to dial it back a few years, how did you guys kind of come together and decide to kind of go forward and create this music? Uh, Jim actually came up to me at his show. I hadn't seen Jim in forever. And he just came up to me when I was playing and said, hey, you want to do something? And I wanted to play with Jim forever. Like he, I had actually asked that when Cop Shoot Cop broke up, I had asked the guys in Unsane if he could join Unsane. Uh, and so I've been waiting 20 years. So when he came up to me at a show, I was like, oh, definitely. You know, and just kind of jumped on it. So. Yeah, from, from the early days, it was like, I think we talked about making music together and, you know, had that common drive and interest. It just took us 20 plus years or whatever it's been to, to actually do it. You know, the timing was just right. And and I think also Swans is a band. It's like Zappa, like people would come in and out and from record to record, it was like, could be any collaboration of people. So I know that there's an army of people with Swans next to their name on Wikipedia yeah. or whatever, where whoever, I don't think Metal Archives has Swans or not Metal Enough, I don't know why. Ugh. But uh, gatekeeping, not cool in 2021 still to this day. You know, I have never had a, a more welcoming sort of see just to kind of talk about the, the spirit of collaboration but also just like unity i ha i remember from growing up in the music scene in new york that kind of overlap hardcore metal and weirdness like mm -hmm. having grown up in that scene it does seem like sort of a, a certain culture of artists and fans did come together and were much more welcoming than your back of the room guys you know oh yeah totally yeah, yeah that's totally true i mean even our practice space our friend rich Paul plays in Live Skull, plays in like the Art Grade Noise Quintet, and who else? A bunch of bands. He's in a bunch of bands. And everyone's really completely welcoming. We've been rehearsing in his basement for almost two weeks, 
And he's just like, yeah, take my spot. <laughs> that's and that's just, yeah, that's yeah. current day. And, and historically, it was like, yeah, Always it used like to be that. like on same cops you cop pussy galore had like a common rehearsal space, and it was definitely, uh, you know, it was definitely a a, a an embracing scene, right? It, it was it was kind of inclusive, um, and it's weird. I think in the interim, I felt like, ah, where did what happened to the New York scene? It didn't feel like there was any kind of scene, but it might have just been out there somewhere and I was detached from it. Um, but it's, I don't know if it's come back around or maybe I've just gotten it reintegrated into it, you know? I think before I moved away, I had a sense of a scene coming back together and congealing between kind of Brooklyn and Queens and other little places, Knockdown Center, Vitus, so, yeah. you know, Lucky 13, yeah. things like that. So yeah, I, I know like we're not like the traditional old school New York scene is kind of a, it's lives in our mind more than it, really is now but i do feel like it's coming back a little bit and it is important people gather to hear music to experience live music that's where like i love records are important they help you know they give us something to talk about and do and listen to but live music is really i think even for you guys would agree right that live music is really the ability to come do this stuff live is really what's at for you totally yeah yeah i mean especially now because it's been we played our record release show the last night a club at vitus the last night a club could be open in new york and then welcome to what a year and a half almost two years two years basically yeah right well 18 months i think it's 18 months yeah it's been a long time um i'm sure you're feeling it too but so we, we did some recording and stuff but man we had three tours that we were supposed to get out and do stuff you know and then you're trapped so so now it feels especially good to play even just practice every day yeah it, it's like good for your mental health i feel like you know and, and, I, and I think like foundationally, you know, our music is, you know, it meant to be experienced live. I mean, you know, totally albums were 100 percent behind those. But it's like, you know, live experiences, you know, there's nothing there's nothing that, you know, beats that. Right on. Uh, yeah, actually, I was going to say, guys, we're playing Market Hotel in New York, which is one of my was one of my favorite venues. I think I saw one of the last shows I saw before the lockdown was uh, was obsessed. And today's oh, the day. And wow. Well, and it was weird because being there, because Steve was saying like, oh, you know, this place reminds me of like the old Lower East Side. I was like, because like that venue was like wild, right? It was like a warehouse of some kind and then it was like a squat and now it's like gentrified neighborhood. So like it's now a venue and it, it's it's actually a really fun place. And I think you guys will enjoy it. Uh, train kind of runs right by the street. I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah. yeah we're um, going so, yeah, man, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh you know, obviously, the be to be able to go back on tour, jump in the van, as they say, and go on tour. I, I'm stoked for you because, like, I think people need to get this music in front of them. These cities are gonna love this show. I think. And we'll cool. be out your way in uh, in March, I think. Oh, cool. Good to know. I'll yeah. make sure I'm uh, I'm in attendance. Clear the calendar. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we'll get the West Coast in there, and then maybe you know, hopefully things will ease up in Europe. I know right now it's like a lot of uncertainty because yeah. it's not just about trying to get over there, which costs an arm and a leg but to also get around and then be able to come home. And I think that's a couple of bands that I talked to were like, yeah, the problem is not going is can we get out? What if someone mm -hmm. gets sick while we're here or we can't leave Yeah, and we have to stay unexpectedly in Europe for a spell. Like that could tell yeah. you as a band, right? Yeah. Any band. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we love Europe. Yeah. <laughs> we want to go to Europe. <laughs> I was going to say that doesn't it's sound so horrible. Okay. You know, right. Right. No. Yeah. Getting stuck but, in Europe. Right. Not getting stuck in Europe may not be a bad thing, but it'd be an expensive thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I was looking at Roadburn uh for, oh, for next year. I was like, man, I would really love to go to Roadburn. I love it. I love mm -hmm. Roadburn is like my absolute favorite place ever. Yeah. Uh, my favorite music festival experience ever. But I was like, I gotta wait. <laughs> I gotta wait to book it to see what's gonna happen. I think they're about to go into another lockdown actually right now. Oh, wow. Some yeah. late year stuff. So Where and there's little you know, around? Holland. Roadburn Holland. Is, like, yeah, Tilburg, uh, right? Or something. Yeah, Tilburg. I think it's so. a beautiful city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we played there. I, I think once or twice, maybe. But um, yeah, yeah. That was Shout out to Walter and Be Becky who put that thing on with others. And I, I imagine, how did you guys get on the the radar of Ipecac? Because I know you know Greg kind of runs the label, and they, I know they have like big name bands, but also like the other bands on the label are no slouches. So I, you're in very good company there, not just with the headline type people. Yeah, and um, I had known Greg Workman who runs it. You know, he put out a Unsane record back, in, you know, back, way back. Um, and they've just always been cool and kind of have a more sort of maybe artistic sort of strain to them than a lot of labels, you know, and sort of 
weird subculture stuff. Um, it just seemed appropriate. So I just hit him up and he was into it, sent a few songs and he was into it pretty much right away. It's been completely amazing. They, uh, they kind of just let us keep recording and keep recording and then release singles and singles, singles, and they build up an album and then they put that out. You know, we can pretty much do whatever we want, which is pretty much all you can ask for from label. That and honesty, you know. Yeah. And you certainly have seen all the ugliness of the label side, both, yes, both you know, throughout your career. Uh, as I'm fond of saying, I, I don't want to totally take credit for this, but I think I have coined the phrase, it's not the music friendship. It is the music business. But I have heard nothing but excellent things from everybody on Ipecac and everybody related yeah, to that that label. Definitely. Definitely grateful to be uh, working with them. <laughs> Right on. And they've done a really nice job, I think, marketing and promoting you. Uh, the really cool releases of the album and the different in the EP and the singles. So I think like there's a lot of cool stuff in the future. If you wanted to do more, you know, adventurous things, cassettes or whatever, I guess cassettes are back too. I don't have cassette yeah. player, but I have some cassettes. <laughs> well, that, that whole that whole quandary of like, OK, yeah, you're putting out a record, but vinyl is going to be like a year later. So like what other you know, what, what can you pull out of the creative toolbox to kind of, you know, bridge that gap? It's, yeah, vinyl's really backed up right now. So indeed. And then uh, I know uh, I know this is probably not even on your radar. I just read some story. Uh, I guess Adele, the singer, the pop singer, who is at, at very talented, has a new record out and she had them press. 500,000 copies on vinyl of her new record. So that's a million because it's a double vinyl. Wow. And I was like, is that, who's going to buy, even people who are rabid fans of hers, half a million people are going to buy this vinyl. I don't even think Metallica could sell half a million vinyls. Yeah. Like, what are you, nuts? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, was, I was reading something in the Times a while back about, uh, about this th thing with vinyl where it's like, there's all this kind of, oh, I don't know, attitude about, you know, now because vinyl is such a thing about like you know really popular artists taking all the all the available resources for, for vinyl and so independent you know if you're an independent artist you're like way back in line of course of course and i'm not trying to pick on adele or make a you know a <laughs> issue or anything and she actually on the same hand she was mad that spotify their default for free users which is most of their people yeah. shuffles albums so you can't just put on a song it shuffles and uh -huh. she made them change their policy to make no. the full album play through the thing now on Spotify for anybody. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not mad at her, but also I was like, you don't need, you do not need to make, that's an overkill, 500,000. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Start with a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess like, oh, if we run out, then it's a problem. But like, I don't think she was going to run out at 200,000, just realistically. Maybe somebody, maybe a big Adele fan is going to go buy a turntable today. I don't know, but I, I doubt it. <laughs> probably paying rush fees on that too oh man right and they and they had to jump the line right from everybody at whatever the whole whoever they used to press that out they you know that's that's across the board so just yeah what a you know i'm nothing against her but like just yeah not the best thing but yeah i hear you i think cds are still a fun thing and i see a lot of them and maybe we can get some creative cd packaging back uh because it was kind of going away for a while i was like okay just put this thing out we have vinyl to do the creative layout and everything, but maybe CDs can kind of bridge that gap until a vinyl is ready, or maybe we'll put the vinyl out on a Bandcamp Friday or a Record Store Black Friday or something. So it's a little yeah. more, you know, exclusive thing or a little more culture, like collector culture type of thing that will help it. But I am I am looking forward to you guys, you know, uh, you know, getting on this road and doing this tour and doing touring. What's uh, what's it look like for you guys? Are you guys still creating new music all the time, or is it kind of you're gonna try to enjoy this little release cycle you've had for 2021? We're we're kind of ongoingly working on on new material. We went into the studio and recorded a good a number of uh, of, of ideas, um, a handful of which are kind of surviving, probably at least a couple of which we'll bring out into these shows we're about to, to do. So, I mean, we're continuously, I mean, it, there's a lot of different things in life, but we, we are continuously, uh, you know, threading, you know, our creative work through that. We're actually going to into the studio in Minneapolis on our day off during the tour. <laughs> yep. To record more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we're kind of busy. Nice. Okay. Minneapolis is so fun fun town for music music history and current and past yeah so, uh, we'll see see how it goes give it a shot you know hopefully it's not too snowy yeah i know it's gonna be it seems like it's gonna be a cold tour bundle up <laughs> <laughs> um Thanks. as you know 
do your best. And oh, yeah. uh, now I've been there before, yeah. man. I've, I've toured Canada in February. You know, it's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it gets to nice. Uh, do you guys have other stuff going on with other projects, solo, other bands, historic bands, anything like that you can share or just kind of oh. focusing on human impact right now? I mean, I've been doing the early Unsane cuts, the like pre Vinny and Dave stuff with the super early shit uh, with a couple of friends of mine. Um, so we just kind of made, we started doing it during the pandemic for fun, but then we started doing shows. So you know, we'll probably do a few shows here and there. Of just the super early shit, you know, it's kind of, it's really fun actually to go back and play shit that you wrote when you were a kid, you know, it's very entertaining. Nice. I've been working on like a bunch of like kind of ambient ideas, um, just kind of as I can. And then I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, looks like I'm going to be involved in a theater production in Europe in, uh, in summer and into, you know, through next year. Oh, amazing. We like that. That sounds great. I, it's kind of weird. I always draw a parallel between kind of theater and and underground metal because it's like you have to really want to be there either way like you really if you're a theater <laughs> person whether it's plays or musicals or whatever it is big production small production drama uh avant-garde whatever it is you have to really want it and it's the same thing like we're like AA. we'll take you whenever you want to come in but the people who are here usually stay and we want to be here so yeah. i respect there's a lot of parallels in my life to theater and heavy metal but um that's awesome i'm so glad to hear that you guys have you know, stuff going on and you're able to stay up and do this tour. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's not always the fun, it's not always a fun report from people, what you've been doing the last uh, few years, you know, it's been hard just for a few last questions as we, uh, we're winding down to the end of the year, what new music have you been both listening to anything current or just historical that you've been jamming a lot? What you, what will you hear in the, uh, the van, the van playlist? I mean, I have to be honest. I've been listening to a lot of the new ideas and stuff. I'm, we were working on a lot and then maybe like Brian Eno. <laughs> yeah. And that Chase yeah. Long sound. Oh yeah. Your, your favorite song. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, just not. I mean, we've really immersed ourselves in writing like for about a year now yeah so when i get a minute i gotta write i pretty much gotta work on something he wants to play it at the next show you know so i gotta get to work you know i think bands that are kind of cut from similar you know material as us that i've been listening to well facts and mets they're they're you know pretty astounding and you know i'm jealous that they're out there touring that'd be like an awesome bill to be on um Heads from uh, from UK um, been doing some interesting stuff. Psychotic monks from France have been doing some interesting stuff. Um, so that's just kind of a handful. And and I think we both listen to a wide variety of stuff. But I just kind of highlighted bands that are in the same genre. That's killer. That's killer. That's good. Yeah, it's good to get that stuff in. And then of course, as I like to end these things on a wild card question, so permit me this: if you could go back, get in the time machine, and ask your younger self, you know, tell your younger self a piece of advice about the music business, what would it be each of you? I don't know. Sign record deals with your friends, <laughs> with your real friends, you know, that's, that's, but that I've always kind of held true to that one anyway. So. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's weird. I, like, I definitely, well, through my life, right. I've had my, my share of crash and burns. Right. Um, but all of those, I think took me to a different place and weeded out motives, right? That's true musically, personally, socially. So all the things that you can look back and be like, wow, that's pretty fucked up, right? We're, we're actually like, um, mechanisms that got me to a, a place of, I don't know, openness and, and, and freedom, like creatively, uh, emotionally. Uh, so what would you say to your 17 year kid? Uh, and look quick. You know, like no, no I don't think I don't think I would be like. It's, there's no regrets. I'd be like, you know, I don't think I would. I don't think I would be bad. Advice, positive advice. <laughs> yeah, Come yeah. on, just quick, like a sentence. What yeah, would you say? Yeah, what yeah. would, what well, would it be? Live without fear. Oh, well, I'd say get rid of that bad attitude. <laughs> That's my advice. <laughs> Live without fear. You're dead. You're gonna no, be dead like, next week. Yeah, like, exactly. Exactly. And just to let you know, I would go back to my younger band self when I played in bands to tell younger band me, don't trust those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, That's kind of like spend record deals with your friends, you know, come on. A same thing, bit. same thing. Yeah, well, yeah, same you know, thing. Yeah, apples oranges. But yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Thank you, guys. Human Impact. Good luck yeah. on the tour. Be safe. And cool. uh, please leave somebody watching the van. Don't get robbed. 
And uh, everybody out there, please check out EP1 right now on Epic Hack Records. Go check out Transit, Subversion, the debut full length. I think there's some other singles out there too. Please support these guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with Ghost Cult. It's been a pleasure and an honor, guys. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.